Hi, this is Foundations of Mathematics and Pre-Calculus 10. We're looking at chapter 4.1. This is square roots and cube roots. And these are the inverse functions to squaring and cubing. So if we're given the area of a square or the volume of a cube, then we can work backwards and find the side length. For example, find the side length of a square if the area is 49 centimeters squared. Now, this is an easy question because this is a perfect square, but let's go through the proper algebra steps. So we have s squared equals a. Now we substitute the area that we know, 49 centimeters squared. Now we can take the square root of both sides. Okay, taking the square root of a variable is no different than taking the square root of anything else. We're looking for pairs. So there's two s's here. We're multiplying s with another s. And then we can pull out the single s. And the square root of 49 is 7. And we have centimeters squared. So this is centimeters times centimeters. We can pull out one centimeters from the pair. So you need to take note that we're also taking the square root of the units. Let's look at another example. Find the side length of a cube if the volume is 125 cubic inches. Even though the cube follows, we say cubic first. Again, we start out with s cubed equals the volume, and we substitute 125 cubic inches. Now we take the cube root and the cube root. This time we need to take out triplets. So there's three s's, we can pull that out. The cube root 125 is 5, and there's 3 inches. So that's inch times inch times inch, and we're pulling out 1. So we have 5 inches for the side length. So what if you don't know how to do the cube root in your head? Okay, we can use the calculator. Some calculators have a cube root button, and on this one it does. So we have to enter a 3 first for the cube root. Then we press 2nd, and this one. Okay, and then 125. And this is known as a natural expression calculator. And when we write the cube root, the 3 should be in this curvy part. On this calculator, it can't quite get it there because of the resolution. So when you're writing it, if you put a 3 in front, this means 3 times the square root, and that's not what we want. We want the cube root. So be careful with that. On this calculator, there's a cube root button, and it's shift, that key, and this one's a little bit better with writing the 3 inside that symbol, but it's still not perfect. And we get 125. What happens if you use a calculator that doesn't have the cube root? So you should know this. We do 125, and this means raised to the power of. And we just do 1 divided by 3. And this works because, again, it's natural expression. It's showing this is in the exponent. And we get 5. If you don't have a natural expression calculator, you need to put brackets around 1 divided by 3. Otherwise, uh, you'll get the incorrect answer. So it would look like this. And then divide by 3. And this is not a full natural expression calculator because it doesn't put the 3 on the bottom. So if you're getting this answer, it means you really need to put brackets around the 1 divided by 3. And on this calculator, 125, x raised to the power of 1 divided by 3. Again, 
its natural expression and puts this in properly. And we get 5. Please make sure you know how to do this on your calculator to get the right results. So, if the root is an integer, then the radicand is a perfect square or cube, etc. So, this radicand is a perfect square. This radicand is a perfect cube. And if it's not a perfect cube or a perfect square or any perfect, then we call it a radical. And we'll look at this later on. So, how can we find the root without a calculator? So, one way is by prime factorization. Or just factorization. But um, first, you need to know the divisibility rules. And you should have learned this already, so let's take a look at it as a refresher. Two. If it's even, then it's divisible by two. And divisible means when we divide it, we get an integer. And what does it mean to be even? Well, it means it ends in 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. So an example is 1,376. It ends in a 6, so this is even. 1,375 is not divisible by 2. Divisible by 3. If the sum of the digits is divisible by 3, then the number is divisible by 3. So what do I mean by this? Okay, let's take 7, 1, 7. We add up the digits. 7 plus 1 plus 7 equals 15. So 717 is divisible by 3, whereas 716 would not be because it adds up to 14, and that's not divisible by 3. Okay, divisibility by 4. If the last two digits is divisible by 4. So 13, 76. We look at the last two digits, and we divide it by 4. If you have a calculator, I guess you could just divide the whole thing by 4. So let's take a look at this. 1376 divided by 4, and that's an integer. But if we just take the 76, we could do this with mental arithmetic, divided by 4. That's an integer, so it's divisible by 4. Okay, this one's an easy one. If it ends in a 0 or 5, that means it's divisible by 5. 6 requires a combination of 2 and 3. So if it's even, so if it ends in 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8, and the sum of the digits is divisible by 3, then it's divisible by 6. So if we look at 717 again, it is divisible by 3. We calculated that before, but it's not even. Let's look at another number not and we'll just change this up to two six so if we add up the digits seven plus two plus six this is 15 it's divisible by three and it ends in a six so it's divisible by two so this is divisible by six and we can test this out on the calculator 726 divided by six and we see that it's an integer, so it works. And let's just check 717. It ends in a decimal, so it doesn't work. It's not divisible by 6. Number 7, divisibility by 7. It's complicated, so we won't learn about that this year. Divisibility by 8. This one, we have to check the last three digits. So let's check if 1376 is divisible by 8. And we'll use this calculator. 376 divided by 8. It's 47, so it is divisible by 8. Let's just check. We look at 1376 and divide by 8. 
172. So yes, it works both ways. Now, if the sum of the digits is divisible by 9, then it's the number's divisible by 9. So let's look at 717. And 15 is not divisible by 9, so not. So we need to add 747. So this is 7 plus 4 plus 7. 7 plus 4 is 11, plus another 7 is 18. 18 is divisible by 9. So that must mean 747 must be divisible by 9. So let's verify this. 747 divided by 9, and we have an integer, so it is divisible. And let's just check 717 divided by 9, and we get a fraction. So it is not divisible by 9. And lastly, we have 10. If it ends in a 0, it's divisible by 10. And that's pretty simple. And you shouldn't need a calculator to divide by 10. All you do is to remove a 0 or move the decimal place. So divided by 10 equals 137. Whereas 1376 divided by 10 equals 137.6, and that's not divisible by 10. Okay, we want to try to divide by the biggest factor to start off with. And an easy one to do is 9. 1 plus 2 plus 9 plus 6 is 18. So this is divisible by 9. And 9 is an easy one to divide by. 1, 9, 12 minus 9 is 3. Bring down the 9. 9 goes into 39 four times. That's 36. Subtract, we get 3. Bring down the 6, we get 36. So this is 144. Let's keep track of the 9. And we'll do it with a different color. 144. 1 plus 4 plus 4 equals 9, so that's divisible by 9. So we have 9 divided into 144. 1, 9, subtract, we have 54, and that's a 6. And 16 is easy. We have 4 times 4. So 1, 2, 9, 6 equals 9 times 9 times 4 times 4. These aren't quite prime, so this is 3 squared times 3 squared times 2 squared times 2 squared. And we count the exponents, we get 3 to the 4th and 2 to the 4th. We can pull out two pairs. So 1296 is a perfect square. But not cube. Okay, to be a perfect cube, we need to be able to pull out triplets. If we pull out three threes, we're still left with one three. So because there's a leftover, it's not a perfect cube. Let's look at the next example. So it ends in a five. It's best to try to divide by five squared. We want to see if it's at least a perfect square. So 25 into 3375, that goes in once. We have 8 and bring down 7, this goes 3 times, so that's 75. Multiplying by quarters shouldn't be too difficult because we have quarters in currency. This is 1, 2, 5, and that's a 5. This ends in a 5, so we can divide by 5 again. I don't think we can divide by 25 because that would be 1 and a quarter. And we have 2, and that's 10. 
subtract, we get 3, and we get 7. Okay, 27, and we should be marking these. 27 is 9 times 3, and that's 3 squared times 3 to the power 1, so this is 3 cubed. 25 is 5 squared, so we have 3, 3, 7, 5 equals 5 cubed times 3 cubed. 3, 3, 7, 5 is a perfect cube. But not square. If we pull two fives out, we're left with one five, and because it doesn't match anything, it's not a perfect square. Let's take a look at 105. It ends in a five. 105, and we have five. That's two, ten, five, and one. And we know that 21 is three times seven. So, 105 equals 3 times 5 times 7. So, there's no pairs or triplets of anything. And so, 105 is neither a perfect square or cube. So, if you're asked to do the root using factorization, do not use the square root function or the cube root function on your calculator. You can only use the calculator to divide. So, if you're not capable of doing long division, you can use your calculator for the division, but you still need to work out the factors and show the work like this. And let's look at one additional topic. A factor tree. Sometimes you'll be asked to do a prime factorization using a factor tree. So, rather than starting a new problem, let's just go with uh, 3375. 3375, and we know it had 25. And it's just writing it out in a slightly different form. So we have 135. You still need to do the division with long division or on your calculator. We know this is 5 times 5. And this is 5 times 27. This is 9 times 3. And this is 3 times 3. And when we're done making all these prime numbers, then we just look at the bottom level of each branch. Okay, so these are called leaves, and we just look at the leaves for the answer. So this is 5 cubed times 3 cubed. And again, we have the perfect cube. And that completes this lesson.